Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing design of a multi-plate clutch and cone clutch based on uniform pressure and wear theory. So already in uh, video 3, uh, we discussed uh, uh, the design of a single plate clutch uh, based on a uh, uniform pressure theory. So wear theory we couldn't discuss. So now in this video, the beginning of the video, we will finish off uh, the design of single plate clutch uh, uh, uniform wear theory and later we will discuss uh, uh, design of multi-plate and cone clutch. So moving to the single plate clutch based on uniform wear theory, according to this theory, it is assumed that the wear is uniformly distributed over the entire surface of the friction disc and this assumption is used for workout uh, clutches. The axial wear of the friction disc is imposed to the frictional work uh, and uh, the work done by the frictional force that is uh, mu into p, the quotient of friction into the intensity of the pressure and the subbing velocity uh, both that is 2 pi r into power where n is the sorry where n is the speed in rpm assuming speed n and quotient of friction mu is constant for given configuration let me write mu vr is directly proportional to pr so where pr is equal to constant c so when clutch plate is new and rigid the wear at the outer radius will be more and which will release the pressure at the outer edge due to the rigid, rigid uh, pressure plate and this will change the pressure distribution so during running condition, the pressure distribution is adjusted in such a manner that the product uh, of pressure is constant C. So from the equation, the previous equation, let me assume the axial force Fa is equal to 2 pi of um, the two limits like upper limits and lower limits, the DO2 by DI2 as we know that the lower limit should be uh, shown in uh, below and upper limit in the upper side. So into PR into DR. Since PR is the constant, let me take the PR also outside as a constant. So 2 pi C and I am denoting the product of PR as C. Again, the integration of DR we should do uh, with the limits DO2 by, by DI by 2. So integration of DR is nothing but R and uh, apply the limits, upper limit and lower limit. So I will be getting 2 pi C into DO2 minus DI by 2. So after simplification, it is FA divided by 2 pi into uh, outer diameter minus inner diameter by 2. So in turn T is equal to integration of uh, 2 pi mu PR square DR which is equal to 2 pi mu C. I will be taking a PR outside. So in uh, so uh, the uh, uh, integration uh, variables will be R into DR or the limits uh, DO2 by DI2. So uh, uh, after integrating so R of integration uh, is R square by 2 and apply the limits upper limit and lower limit. So 2 pi mu C into do by 2 divided by 8 minus di by 2 divided by 8. So t is equal to pi mu c by 8 into do square minus di square. So substituting the value of c from the equation. Uh, so we will be getting t is equal to pi into mu divided by 4 and do square minus di square into fa divided by pi into do minus di. And uh, further simplification leads to t is equal to mu into fe into a divided by 2 do minus di by 2 and in turn t is equal to mu into fa uh, into dm by 2 where dm is nothing but mean diameter and for the uniform wear theory dm is equal to outer diameter plus inner diameter by 2. So this is the torque transferred by n friction plates in case if it is means t is equal to n dash into mu fa dm by 2. So axial force fa where we have written as pi b dm into do minus di by 2. And the maximum pressure occurs at inner radius fa is equal to pi into p into di by 2 into outer diameter minus inner diameter. So now we will discuss on um, multi-plate clutch and uh, cone clutch. So in the sketch we can able to see the multi-plate clutch. We can able to see here this are the multi-plates. In case of the single plates mean we had only one uh, uh, clutch plate but multi-plate which 3 clutches, 4 clutches, 5 clutches based on the requirements. And uh, the thing we need to remember here is as usual here this one particular flange which is connected with the driving shaft with the help of a key and moving to the other side where without key you know like the clutch plates are fixed to the uh, the driven shaft now here multiple clutches we can able to see and this driving disc also we can able to see and all this uh, entire thing has been covered up with uh, you know like a housing we can able to see here the three clutch plates are there and each uh, each clutch is having uh, two effective surfaces so you can able to this is upper and lower sides so two effective surfaces so totally three clutch plates mean six effective surfaces are there and uh, all these things is operated with the help of your spline and even uh, this housing has been connected with this clutch plates with the help of your bolt so and the sketch shows a multiple uh, clutch plate where the driving discs are splined to the driving shaft so that they are free to slip along the shaft but must rotate with it 
and the driven disc drive the housing by means of bolts along which they are free to slide. The housing is key to the driven shaft by a sunk key. In the clutch shown, there are five pairs of friction surfaces and the driving disc may be pressed against the driven disc by a suitable mechanism so that the torque may be transmitted by friction between the discs. So the multi-disc clutch, the equation derived for the torque transmitting velocity of single plate are just I'll be modified to the account for the number of plates of contacting surface in the following way. So for the uniform pressure, T will be equal to 1 by 2 into I into mu1 into Fa into dm which is in turn equal to pi by 4 into p uh, d2 square uh, minus uh, d i square where uni for uniform wear theory t is equal to outer diameter square minus inner diameter uh, the inner diameter square and where i is equal to number of pairs of contacting surfaces small i while showing i have denoted as capital but actually it is i so i was explaining the number of contacting surfaces so contacting surface if totally three clutch plates are made it's not necessary like all the three clutch both the sides should be uh, having the effective surface that is contacting surface mostly like a uh, uh, three or four contacting surface is sufficient and for the uniform pressure theory finally i'll be writing the equation t is equal to 1 by 2 i uh, into mu 1 uh, into fa into dm where dm is equal to 2 by 3 outer diameter cube minus inner diameter cube divided by outer diameter square minus inner diameter square and axial force fa is equal to pi by 4 into p outer diameter square minus inner diameter square where i is nothing but number of friction surfaces and for the uniform wear theory t is equal to 1 by 2 into i into mu 1 into fa into dm where dm is equal to d2 plus di by 2 and fa finally i can equal to 1 by 2 into pi b dm into do minus di so the maximum pressure occurs at the inner radius so fa is equal to 1 by 2 pi 1 into p into d1 uh, into do minus di and moving to the cone clutch so a simple form of the cone clutch you can able to see this and what is the major difference between the plate clutch and the cone clutch means you can able to see this uh, uh, the clutch whatever i'm using it is uh, made in such a way that the cup and cone shape you can able to see this in between the cup and cone the friction lining is provided usually a leather or asbestos whatever is there and as usual the cup instead of your bigger flange here the cup is uh, connected with your driving shirt with the help of your sunk key and the cone has been connected with the you know like the follow here as usual the spring the collar other setup is there so uh, this was a simple form of the clutch float and it consists of a driver or cup and the follower or the cone and the cup is key to the driving shaft by a sunk key and has an inside conical surface or face which exactly fits the outside conical surface of the cone uh, the slope of the cone face is made small enough to give you a high uh, normal force the cone is fitted to the driven shaft by a feather key uh, the follower may be shifted along the shaft by a forked shifting lever in order to engage the clutch by bringing the two conical surfaces in contact. And moving to the advantages and disadvantages of the cone clutch. So the cone clutch is uh, very simple in design and it is uh, uh, less axial forces required to engage the clutch. And the disadvantages are uh, there is a tendency to grab and there is some reluctance in disengagement. Strict requirements uh, made to be coaxility of the shaft being connected. And uh, uh, better, uh, uh, we will discuss the cone clutch transmitted the what is that the derivation in the upcoming video because we don't have time to discuss in this video. So we'll discuss the cone clutch concept in the upcoming video. Thank you.